Hey everyone, this is Ms. Moffat from Across the Universe, and this is my February 2017 wrap up. February is over, thank goodness, and hopefully my immune system will come out the stronger for it. I was impressively sick this month, as in two rounds of antibiotics, an inhaler, and some liquid codeine to deal with a chest infection that became a sinus infection that became an ear infection, the last of which I got on February 11th, and I still can't quite hear out of my right ear. That being said, being bedridden means you get lots of reading done, which is a good thing. Maybe? Overall, I read nine books, which totaled 2,908 pages, and I really think that this is going to be the heaviest month of reading for me, for real. <laughs> First, I read Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini, which was the February pick from my book club. You might also recognize him as the author of The Kite Runner, or you might be able to read that information on the cover of the book. A Thousand Splendid Sons follows the lives of two women who come of age right before the Taliban comes to power in Afghanistan. Miriam is an illegitimate child whose situation is resolved after she's married off to the mentally and physically abusive Rashid, and Layla is a young girl who's forced by her circumstances to accept a marriage proposal from the same man about a decade later. Miriam and Layla become a surrogate mother and daughter for one another, and this is the tale of their survival and resistance. I don't normally pick up books like this, but that's why I'm enjoying my book club so much. I loved Layla outright for her unbreakable spirit and her desire to see Afghanistan become a good and safe place for everyone, but I think the true hero here was Miriam. Despite the ways the people in Miriam's life tried to define her, first as a harami or a bastard child, and later as an unfit wife, she's able to defy them through her protection of Layla, and there's a gentleness and a deeply caring side to her that's never crushed despite her circumstances. Also, there's a boy named Tariq whom I love dearly. I mean, who else would use his prosthetic leg to beat up another boy who is bullying Layla? Overall, I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Zen in the Art of Writing, releasing the creative genius within you by Ray Bradbury. I love me some Ray Bradbury, and I found this at a used bookstore on a recent trek to Ottawa that my gent and I took, and given it was Ray Brad's, I had to buy it. I think calling it a writing guide is a little misleading, though. It's actually a collection of essays that are either a riff on the wonders of writing or insights into his own creative process. In particular, I liked his approach to finding his own voice. He would brainstorm lists of nouns and those would become the titles for his short stories. And really, he wrote over 400 short stories in his life, so that's a lot of lists. Or he'd take news articles that outraged him and he'd write stories as responses to those events or themes. Overall, I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars because I felt it would appeal more to Bradbury diehards than it would necessarily to writers looking for concrete tips. Next, I read Passing Strange by Ellen Clages a novella about queer ladies in the 1940s who may or may not have otherworldly powers and who may or may not perform as sexy drag kings. This was the easiest $2.99 I ever spent. I'm a sucker for this time period, and Passing Strange was the perfect blend of the era's noir and pulp scene with the romantic tale of Emily, a woman who's avoided her family's censure, and Haskell, a bisexual artist who paints for the pulps. I like that Clay just gives readers time to get familiar with the characters before going in depth with the world's magical elements. As odd as it sounds, it made the magic feel more believable or natural natural, given that their romance already felt so otherworldly. Passing Strange definitely passed my test, and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I also realized that I need to read more novellas. Full stop. Next, I read volumes 1 and 2 of Orange by Ichigo Takano. I cried through the anime adaptation of this series, and I was curious to know if the tears would flow for the original manga. The answer is yes. Naho, a second year high school student, receives a letter from herself 10 years from the future that tells her two important things. One, she needs to prevent what will become the biggest regrets of her life, and two, she needs to save the life of new transfer student Kakeru. She befriends and eventually falls in love with Kakeru, only to learn that in the original timeline, Kakeru commits suicide. Now is her chance to save him where the older version of herself failed. Definitely a heavier read, but so important as well. Depression is one of those fickle creatures that I think a lot of us can sense when somebody is suffering from it, and yet most of us don't know how to address it, let alone how to help somebody through it. Naho discovers that if she just made minor changes in her behavior, she could have helped Kakeru to feel less alone and could have given him something to hold on to even in his darkest days. And that is why I feel like this should be required reading for all high school students, not gonna lie. It ends with three sample chapters from a series called How Do We Astronaut? Like, that's a decent chunk of not orange right there. Regardless, I gave the series 5 out of 5 stars for its honesty and its hopefulness, and for its effortless explanation of the multiverse in a shoujo manga series. Then I read Dear Leader by Damien Rogers. I loved Paper Radio, which was Rogers' first book of poetry, and Dear Leader was the long-awaited follow-up book. And I just didn't like this one. There was one poem called 52 Notes for the Products of Conception that was equal parts beautiful and heartbreaking, 
because it gives you little glimpses and snippets of the time right before and after she had a miscarriage. It felt like you lived those moments with her. But the rest just didn't hit the same emotional note. Like at times it felt like they were experiments from a high school writing craft class. I ended up giving this book two out of five stars and I'm still mourning that reality. Then I read Man by Kim Tui. Kim Tui is definitely one of my author crushes and she makes me want to learn French so that I can read her books without a translator coming in between us. Although Sheila Fishman, who translates this book, is probably the only French to English translator who I'd want in this threesome. Her first book, Rue, was shortlisted or nominated for like every literary award in Canada and her follow-up book, Man, is just as impressive and poetic and captivating. Man is about a woman named Man who, as a young girl, marries an older gentleman and moves from Vietnam to Montreal. She discovers her natural talent for cooking and becomes a chef in her new hometown. Her food makes fellow Vietnamese expats feel as though they've arrived home and local French Canadians are welcomed into the community via their taste buds. Man's content with her life until a trip to Paris opens her eyes to a love and a passion she's never known before, all of which threatens the life that she's built for herself. Tui has a unique style where every page lists an idea or an item, and then she writes a brief impression or reflection on man's life based on that item or idea. For instance, the page titled Saying Farewell talks about how when people are leaving Vietnam, they're asked to not forget the people who stay, whereas man's mother specifically asks her to forget about her past and to reinvent herself with no baggage. I often forget that Tui's work is fiction. It just feels so real and so natural and seems so autobiographical even though it's not. And for that I gave Man 5 out of 5 stars as well. Then I finally read Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, which is book one of the Illuminae files. Katie and Ezra have a messy high school breakup, and then their home planet Carenza is destroyed by Baytech Industries, a major corporation that wants to take over the planet's illegal mining operations. This book is a postmortem dossier containing interview transcripts, memos, instant messaging transcripts, diary entries, and more telling the tale of the surviving evacuees and of Katie and Ezra's slow reconciliation. Illuminae is 600 pages long and by page 100 I was like, how are they fitting so much plot in here? There is so much happening right now. This book tussles with survivor guilt and military states and the fear of endemic outbreaks and the ethics involved with treating patients suffering from said outbreak and a rather damaged sentient AI, it just, it has everything. I gave this book four out of five stars, and I think I would have given it five out of five stars if it had ended in an adult fiction way instead of a YA fiction way, and you're just gonna have to read it to understand what I'm talking about. And because I loved Illuminae so much, I went out and bought Gemina, which is volume two of the Illuminae files, and I read it in a weekend. Gemina takes place on the Heimdall jump station, which is a spot the Carenza survivors are trying to reach. As was feared, Heimdall has been compromised by Baytech Industries, and its residents need to survive in order for the Carenza evacuees to survive. We follow two new characters in this book, Hannah, who's the station captain's daughter, and Nick, who's the reluctant member of the House of Knives, a notorious crime family. Gemini is also written as a postmortem dossier, but we get a little taste of YA romance mixed with the class system of this distant space station. Oh, and P.S. This is the first YA book I've encountered that explains wormholes and what happens when two universes are connected to the same waypoint. This is almost as good as the multiverse explained in manga format. For that, I gave Gemina four out of five stars. Man, I was entirely spoiled with rad books this month. I'm almost glad I got sick just so I could dive into some amazing stories. Have you guys checked out any of these books? If not, are you intrigued by any of them? Was your February far healthier than mine? And I hope you can say yes to that. So here's to March. May I find better health and a great stack of books. On that note, signing off.